You're listening to the Headhunting Housewives podcast with your recruiter, Diane O'Brien, episode number 73. Hello, housewives. It is the Monday after a beautiful 4th of July vacation. And I'm on my back deck here, um, still in vacation mode after all the family left. It's like a perfect weather here in summertime on the East Coast, um, on these little barrier islands by the sea. And I hope if all of you aren't still somewhere gorgeous like that mentally, you can bring all of those vacation memories, hopefully by the ocean or by a lake or by a mountain and hike, whatever you do on your 4th of July. Um, that can really fuel you um, going into the rest of summer or thinking about what you're going to do in the fall. Um, Today, I want to talk to you because before I went into uh, vacation with the family, I had um, put out a podcast, which I actually forgot to publish and just published this morning. So I guess I was in vacation mode um, about becoming a headhunter. And I really want to circle back to all of you housewives that are maybe just dreaming up being a headhunter because I know summertime is a great time just to think of new ideas and let your mind drift. You know, when you're maybe sitting on a beach about what would be fun to do in life for the next year or five years or 10 years or, you know, however you think. And um, I know for many summers for me, that's always been thinking about headhunting, how I'd be growing my game or expanding my game. And I want to talk a little bit about all the different ways um, if you're inclined to be considering recruiting or headhunting or sourcing as a career for you, maybe in the future, all the different ways you can do that. Um, you know, I think I've done plenty of podcasts at this point, uh, especially early on about what recruiting is all about and, you know, maybe the more details of it. And of course, the private podcast for you ladies that have already, you know, nibbled into recruiting or know a little bit about it or trying to up their game. But for you housewives, again, that are just out there dreaming of it and thinking, could this be the good career? You know, I want to talk about the different ways you can use it. So the first thing is, you know, remember in recruiting or headhunting, there's a couple routes you can go. Um, what's beautiful about this career is that it can be work from home. I've done this, except for the first couple, well, even the first couple years when I was a corporate recruiter, I was home doing it, even when I was doing it for a corporate company. Um, but you can go work, you know, actually for a company, whether that means you go inside an actual office or you're working for a corporate company still from home. And especially post COVID, all of those companies that didn't offer remote pretty much for offering remote now. So um, if you ever wanted to be, you know, have a really great career, but still do it from home, recruiting, it's like there's more opportunities than ever. So first of all, know that. Um, So you can go the corporate route. And so you can, you know, learn all about it. Um, I know a lot of times for you ladies, especially that you were home raising kids for the past, you know, maybe, maybe just the first five or 10, 15, 20 plus years, depending on how many kids you have, it can be really scary to even consider a new career because you have no experience. And you think, well, you know, it's so hard to jump in or even interview for a job before you have experience. And that's where Headhunting Housewives and, you know, we can help you through my companies. I, I hired through my company, Salesforce. I partner through um, a company that I, you know, lead now, uh, the hiring for Kaplan Executive Search Hiring. So the companies that I hire with them through um, become a really great area to actually practice on real jobs to learn recruiting. So when you work with me or with us or Headhunting Housewives, these are real jobs when you get into it that you can practice on. So when you put your resume together and whether you're going to go start your own business or you want to go the corporate route, you have something real on your resume where you've worked real jobs, hopefully place some even, you know, by the time you want to um, go get a job in corporate America so that, you know, you have real experience under your belt, right? Because that's very scary for many women. So if that's your fear, you can remove that because not only will you learn all about it, um, you know, book wise, but you'll actually practice it real life on real jobs. So there's that, right? But then for those of you thinking, okay, not only do I want to learn this, but I want to open my own business. Um, that's great too, because there's plenty of companies. And I work with a lot of those where they hire us, you know, as the recruiter and we look for sourcers and again, I have a lot of friends and other clients as well that look for, you know, newbie, I want to say next, actually always newbie people, but But they do. Like I'm thinking of two clients in particular that will train from the get-go. So if you wanted to, let's say, learn something in in a certain field and then become your own business, you can do it that way where you go and actually learn it, whether it's through being trained and then go do the corporate side for a while and then go on your own. 
Or if there's companies that if you want to learn it and start your own business, have a shingle from day one, you would then go from, let's say, working for us or uh, a company like us, you know, work for a mentor or a client that just you cut your teeth and learn on. And then right out of training, you kind of have your own shingle and you know what to do. And then you can start getting the clients. Now, of course, on that side, the biggest difference between going corporate and working direct, even if it's a 1099 for someone, um, or having your own business is the ability to get your own client. So I'd say that's the biggest difference because you can learn recruiting and go, you know, work for anyone else as a recruiter um, right away. But again, the only difficult or different part if you want to start your own business is you're still learning all the recruiting, the sourcing, the hiring, but you have to know how to go get your clients, right? So really you can ease into it either way. You have to figure about figure out what you want. Um, you know, and then go from there. Of course, I always think take the easier path. I would suggest, you know, learn recruiting, like get enough of it, you know, from um, whether it's us or another source or mentor or company, get enough um, under your belt so you can go get that corporate job if you like. Like when I say corporate nowadays, it can still be from home, but you're working for them, whether that's a W-2 employee full-time or 1099 contract position, there's all those options as a recruiter and headhunter. Um, So just, you can learn that way. And then if the idea is still to take it to your own business, at least you have the experience, you can learn all the extra stuff that you maybe wouldn't know um, just from a training, so to speak, right? You like to kind of do it real life. And that's why I like actually giving real jobs to work on. Um, so it's not just in theory, like a school where you come out with a, you know, like, oh, I'm, a, you know, I have a diploma or I'm certified as this. No, you've actually been doing it. You've been a source or been a recruiter, right? And that when you go after clients, you have um, some real meat in your bone and can speak to referrals. So that's why the easiest way is really to try to learn it, then go do it, you know, for at least a year, I would say. And then if the f- idea is to then uh, run your own business later, give it time. And you can do that afterwards. Um, and that's a great pathway. So, you know, like people always say, you have to learn to walk before you can run. So figure, you know, there's steps to this. But if you just look at the step right before you, right, and don't get too far ahead of yourself, because I know starting your own business can be a lot. But if you're just going to learn the business first, right, let's say you learn headhunting, you learn how to source people, you learn how to find people, you know how to interview them. So you're only giving the really good people. Um, And then later, again, if you then need to learn the client side, you can learn how to find those clients and how you work with those and contracts, you know, learn everything and then start practicing it and actually doing it uh, on your journey to becoming a headhunter. And it can go into any direction you want. Um, And it can happen quickly. Again, the opening your own business and all that will take a little longer because there's more to learn. But you can pretty much, I mean, I always said 90 days, I I built my book, Work From Home Headhunter off of that because within 10 weeks, I was training people for other clients years ago. And I found people that I trained myself, they could learn that pretty quick in 10 weeks if they were week to week working with me. Um, But the truth was, I had people that when I taught sourcing, they sourced a person, the right person within weeks that actually got hired. So I was helping on the back end doing working with the client to get that person in the door and walking through all the steps to get them hired. But the person that was hired was did come from that sourcer, who within weeks, I taught how to source whether it was on Indeed or LinkedIn, and they got the hang of it very quickly. They, they were good researchers, really. The sourcers are researching people and make sure they're following the profile and asking the right questions to make sure you're finding the exact person. And, uh, you know, a lot of people never want to leave the sourcing brown. They don't want to talk to clients. They don't even want to have to talk to um, anyone really on the phone. I mean, sourcers can do all the research and and now with the internet, be even asking questions via text or the Indies of the world, LinkedIn messaging or email without even a real interview because from a sourcer, you can then send that candidate to the recruiter to do the real interview. So, of course, I've kind of done it all and I usually take people the full life recruiting where they source plus interview the candidate live, when I say live, on the phone at least or Zoom, and then work with the client all the way through. But remember, as a recruiter, um, you know, these are all the little options you have. You can just learn sourcing in a couple weeks and be done and be a sourcer for companies. You can even have your own business sourcing. <laughs> um, I'll tell you, there's a lot of companies launching right now that are venture backed, um, that are only doing the sourcing for big clients and still asking big fees. Back in the day, sourcing was kind of the very initial part of recruiting. So usually we would hire sourcers on an hourly basis, right? Or 
if you were doing still commission or uh, even retained, it might maybe be only a few thousand out of the thousands you would get, you know, in hiring. But there are businesses right now that are dedicating their business model to only the sourcing, turning over that list. And I should say that hasn't, you know, this isn't all, nothing's brand new under the sun. This was done years ago, but these new venture backed companies that were there with the way they're packaging it and marketing it is new to where it looks like a new thing, right? They're coming out and saying, hey, for like, you know, five, six, maybe up to 10,000, we'll just give you the list of great candidates that are going to fit exactly what you want. And you, company A, B, or C, take it from there. So instead of the company, let's say, especially for the executive searches, with it, which they can pay, you know, thirty to $100,000, um, maybe for five, 10, 15,000. And they're just getting a list of people and then their HR is taking it. So, you know, I've seen all many, so many different models of how recruiting can work. Um, you know, for many years, there was a company I worked for that was um, an outsourced recruiting mo- method or model where um, an outsourced recruiter, they would just hire um you know, the interviewer to come in house and you could actually be hired and work at that company on site. But I'm just like a traveling recruiter instead of a traveling nurse, you're just going to certain clients for a few months and doing all the interviews. So someone else did the sourcing for them. And now you're coming in house and you're really good at interviewing people and reading people and maybe your your psychology background people or people that like to dig in um, or you want to study the chronological in-depth interview more. This is called the SIDS interview. You'll be reading books like top grading. You'll get really detailed into the interviewing portion. And we'll talk about all that if that's going to be your niche, right? So there's the sourcing, there's the, you know, the recruiting interviewing, and of course, contract negotiations. If you just want the client side, a lot of these recruiting companies will hire you as what they call a business developer. And I did that for many years where I would only business develop for certain clients that just wanted me to, you know, go in and sign the big fish client because I was kind of good at schmoozing. And I knew a lot of people and maybe in their industry and were able to kind of bring that person to the table, get the deal signed, and then they would have that, um, client, you know, forever, hopefully. So I can think of many where we do that for. In fact, one of the outsourcing clients, we brought someone in that was from London that was visiting New York. I happened to be in New York, couldn't meet the president um, for this travel company, Key Travel. And uh, we were able to sign them for, um, you know, or as partners, which is was local to me. And they're still a great client, right? That's someone I brought into them and they're able to kind of continue all these, you know, what, five, 10 years later. Um, you know, if you're smart, I learned later, you want residuals off that. <laughs> I think only had a few years at the time, but there are people that even get residuals off that. So you have a recurring income for those clients you help book early and they they become lasting clients. Um, So anyway, I know I'm going all over the place, but I just want to give you housewives that don't know about headhunting a a clear picture of all the ways you can learn how to be a headhunter and utilize it to do the job from home. It doesn't have to be, you know, my path where I've kind of done the full facet. You can now, especially now, Um, pick little pieces of your favorite part and then you can make a whole business out of that or go to work for a company only doing that, whether that's, again, sourcing on the hourly or sourcing on the contract or a flat fee, Um, you know, retained ideally, but if you want to start contingent and then go retained, you know, there's just all kinds of ways, whatever you're comfortable with. And again, the key for me, you know, spending my time here on this beautiful morning is just for you to know that that's an option to get that out there. Because I think a lot of times, especially women, if you're thinking about something new, it seems overwhelming, right? Like, oh my gosh, headhunting and, you know, it would take forever to learn all of that or how would I do that? But the truth is, if you just do it one step at a time, it's very doable. And, you know, your main um, job, I would say, each step is just to take the next step. So, if, and usually that's learning more about it, right? <laughs> and you can get all that kind of stuff from free or from minimal investment by learning from the books that talk about it or watching YouTubes or other recruiters. You know, you can go out there and get a job or, you know, learn about it enough to have experience on your about to get something to actually then have someone pay you, you know, to do the job and see if you like it before then venturing in. So you can put your feet in a little bit. It. Um, you can jump full force if you're like that, but there's ways just to kind of seeing if it's right for you. And I can tell you, headhunting, um, you know, I can't think of a better career, a really great corporate, um, you know, when I say corporate again, from home or not, but you're working in the corporate world. Uh, if that's what you want as a businesswoman, helping people land jobs at all levels. And again, what's great about recruiting is whatever industry you were interested in before maybe you became a stay-at-home mom, whatever industry maybe you got your college degree in or, you know, always had an interest in, that industry is hiring. So every single industry hires people. So they all need headhunters and they're always needing and looking for great recruiters, great sourcers, great interviewers, because it's not easy, right? So, I mean, anyone can jump into this business, but the good ones and really knowing how to do it, 
and how to interview well or source well, you know, that's what's going to set you apart from the rest. So if you learn it the right way from the beginning, um, you'll be very good at what you do and that way you'll always be at the top level. You'll get the best clients. You'll get the best fees. Um, you know, the worst thing you can do is jump into a company that will just hire you and they teach you the wrong way where you end up hating it because you're spending all day filling their database or just dialing for dollars all day and talking to all the wrong people. That's what I don't want you to do. And there's a lot of companies um, that will bring you in and do that because you're filling their database and they're really getting a lot more out of you than you're getting from them. They might give you an hourly or a flat fee or commission or whatever it is, but be sure if you're going to go into recruiting to do it and learn it the right way so you're knowledgeable enough to if you go work for a company. It's not just any company, but the right company. So you know how you're spending your time and how you're making your income and you can be calling the shots even if you're new to it. So I want you to have the power to know your worth and to know, you know, the right way to do the job. And you can even educate some clients, even if you're new, um, you know, you're going to have an advisor in me or in us at Headhunting Housewives. Um, so you know what the good um, fee structure is, you know, the right way of doing things. Um, you know, even when helping the other women, ideally, or but any of the candidates we hire, you're going to help them make more money. So I want to make sure you're thinking about the right way and really doing that to benefit them. I mean, you're working with both often your clients and the candidate, but I always like getting my candidate, you know, the most money um, that matches what the budget is for the client. But you want to get them to the next level up, especially women and diversity candidates. So I want you to learn all of that the right way if you're a brand new newbie. And for those of you that all this, you know, you're a headhunter, you just want to up your game with me, you know, we can go into major detail on that too. So, um, but this is a little bit to the new business, knowing how amazing headhunting is and all the different um, ways you can be a headhunter or be a sorcerer and join headhunting housewives. So I hope that is helpful. Um, happy, happy summer, really thinking all this and, you know, um, try it out, read about it, learn about it. And we're here to help and support and guide you. And uh, if not over the summer, uh, maybe we'll see you in the fall when we kind of get a little bit deeper into everything, which is so fun because um, it does take a little bit of a lull in the summer, you'll see, because people are on vacations. But come September, it'll be full force. It's a great time to really dive in. So enjoy your summer, ladies. I'll talk to y'all soon. Bye. If you've enjoyed listening to this podcast, you have to come join us over at headhuntinghousewives.com. It's completely free to join. We're there to offer you guidance, support, inspiration. And when you're ready to go a little bit deeper, we're starting a mentorship program in 2Q. If that's for you, you have to email me at hello at headhuntinghousewives.com and let me know who you are and how I can help. Again, that's hello at headhuntinghousewives.com and I look forward to seeing you there.